This video is about conic section hyperbola. It's a grade 11 pre-calculus lesson. A hyperbola is the locus of all points in a plane whose absolute difference of distances from two fixed points called the foci on the plane remains constant. It is formed when a plane intersects a double right circular cone at an angle such that both halves of the cone are intersected. So we have here the illustration. This is our plane and we have here a double right circular cone. And as you notice, a hyperbola is formed on the intersection. Some hyperbolas open to the left and to the right like this. The parts are, we have here the center, the vertices, we have here vertex 1 and vertex 2. We have the foci, we have focus 1 and focus 2. We have the transverse axis, a line that crosses the foci, the vertices and the center. And this line divides our hyperbola into two congruent parts. Meaning to say, if we are going to fold our graph along this line, the upper part coincides with the lower part. We have the conjugate axis. It crosses the center and is perpendicular to the transverse axis. Then we have the asymptotes. These are the lines that are being approached by our graphs, but our graphs don't cross nor touch these lines. To illustrate the definition of hyperbola, we are going to pick a point that is on the hyperbola. So the absolute value of the distance from P to F1 minus the distance from P to F2, it's always equal to 2A constant. Actually, 2A is the distance from vertex 1 to vertex 2. So we can write the absolute value of P F1 minus P F2 equals 2A. And also, if we are going to pick another point, maybe a point Q on here, so the absolute value of the distance from Q to F1 minus the distance from Q to F2 is also equal to 2A. So we can write Q F1 minus Q F2 equals 2A. Some hyperbolas open upward and downward like this. The parts are, we have here the center, the vertices, vertex 1 and vertex 2, the foci, focus 1 and focus 2, the transverse axis, then we have the conjugate axis, then we have the asymptotes. This table shows the equation, the center, the vertices, the focal length equation, the foci, the asymptotes, the opening, transverse axis, conjugate axis of hyperbolas. So if our equation starts with x squared, our graph opens to the left and to the right. And if our equation starts with y squared, our graph opens upward and downward. We are going to use this table in answering questions about hyperbolas. Let's do examples. Example number one, write 4x squared minus 9y squared minus 36 equals zero in standard form. Give the center, opening, transverse axis, conjugate axis, vertices, foci, and asymptotes, and graph. So this is our equation. It is in general form. The first thing we are going to do here is to move this negative 36 to the other side of the equation so it becomes 4x squared minus 9y squared equals 36. The right side should be equal to 1. So that means we are going to divide our equation by 36. So 4 divided by 36 is 1 over 9. And 9 divided by 36, that's 1 over 4. And then 36 divided by 36 equals 1. So this is our equation. 
x squared over 9 minus y squared over 4 equals 1. Now since we already have the standard equation, we are going to complete the information below. Let's take note that our a here is 3, that's the square root of 9. Our b here is 2, that's the square root of 4. And to find c, this is our formula, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So we are going to find c. So c equals the square root of 9 plus 4. So to remove the square here, we will just put square root of a squared plus b squared. So our a squared is 9, our b squared is 4, so 9 plus 4 is 13, so that means our c is square root of 13. Now our center here has coordinates 0, 0. It's here. Now for our opening, since our equation starts with x squared, our graph opens to the left and to the right. Now our transverse axis has equation y equals 0, this line. And our conjugate axis has equation x equals 0, which is this line. For our vertices, the coordinates are negative a0 and a0. Our a is 3, so that means negative 3, 0 and 3, 0. They are here. For our foci, the coordinates are negative c and 0 and c and 0. Our c is square root of 13, so that means the coordinates are negative square root of 13 and 0 and square root of 13, 0, and they are somewhere here. Now the equation of our asymptotes, we have y equals the positive and negative b over a x. So our b is 2, our a is 3, so that means our equation is y equals the positive and negative 2 over 3 x. Now to help us graph these asymptotes, we are going to use the values of a and b. So from the center, we move 3 units to the left and 3 units to the right. Then from the center, we are going to move 2 units up and 2 units down. We have a rectangle formed. Our asymptotes cross the vertices of our rectangle. So these are the asymptotes. Now we can draw our graph. So our graph looks like this. Example number two, write negative x squared plus 4y squared minus 4 equals 0 in standard form. Give the center, opening, transverse axis, conjugate axis, vertices, foci, and asymptotes, and graph. So this is our equation. We are going to write it in standard form. So first, we are going to arrange. So we are going to move 4 to the right side of the equation. And then the first term should be positive, so 4y squared comes first. So this is how it looks like. 4y squared minus x squared equals 4. Then again, the right side should be equal to 1. So we are going to divide our equation by 4. So 4 divided by 4, that is just 1. So we have 1y squared. And then 1 divided by 4, it's 1 fourth. So we have negative x squared over 4. Then, of course, 4 divided by 4 equals 1. So this is our standard equation. Now, since we already have our standard equation, we are going to complete the information below. Let's take note that our a here is 1. The denominator of y squared is 1, and the square root of 1 is still 1. And our b is 2. That's the square root of 4. And to find c, this is our formula. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Let us solve for c. So c equals the square root of 1. This is a squared plus 4. This is b squared. 1 plus 4 is 5. So our c is square root of 5. 
So our center here has coordinates 0, 0. It's here. And for our opening, since our equation starts with y squared, it's up and down. Our transverse axis has the equation x equals 0, this line. Our conjugate axis has equation y equals 0, it's this one. Our vertices have coordinates 0a and 0, negative a. Our a is 1. So that's 0 and 1 and 0 and negative 1, they are here. Our foci have coordinates 0c and 0, negative c. Our c is square root of 5, so the coordinates are 0, square root of 5, and 0, negative square root of 5. They are somewhere here. For our asymptotes, our equation is y equals the positive and negative a over b x. Our a is 1, our b is 2, so our equation is y equals the positive and negative 1 half x. To facilitate the graphing of our asymptotes, we are going to use the values of a and b. a is 1, so that means from the center we go up 1, and we go down 1. Our b is 2, that means from the center we go to the left 2 and go to the right 2. So we have here the rectangle. Our asymptotes cross the vertices of our rectangle. So our asymptotes look like this. Now we can draw our graph. Our graph looks like this. Example number 3. Write 9x squared minus 16y squared minus 18x minus 64y minus 199 equals 0 in standard form. Give the center, opening, transverse axis, conjugate axis, vertices, foci, and asymptotes, and graph. So this is our equation. It is in general form. The first thing that you are going to do here is to move this negative 199 to the other side and group together terms that have the same variables. So, it's 9x squared minus 18x in one group. Then we have minus the quantity 16y squared plus 64y in another group equals 199. Notice here, that 16y squared is now positive as well as 64y. It's because they are now inside the quantity sign. If you are going to multiply back, negative times 16y squared equals negative 16y squared, and negative times 64y equals negative 64y. Now from here, we are going to factor out 9 which is the coefficient of x squared, and also 16, which is the coefficient of y squared. So for this part, it becomes 9 times the quantity x squared minus 2x. And for this part, it's negative 16 times the quantity y squared plus 4y. So meaning to say, if we are going to multiply back 9 times x squared, it's 9x squared. 9 times negative 2x is negative 18x. Also, negative 16 times y squared equals negative 16y squared. And negative 16 times 4y equals negative 64y. Now, why do I have a space here as well as here? It's because we are going to complete the square. So, to complete the square here, we get 1 half of negative 2, which is negative 1, then square it, that is still 1. And also, 1 half of 4 is 2, then square it, it's 4. So 9 times 1 is 9, so we add 9 on the other side. Negative 16 times 4 is negative 64, so we subtract 64 from the other side. 
Now x squared minus 2x plus 1 is a perfect square trinomial, so it can be written as the quantity x minus 1 squared, and 9 is still here, and also y squared plus 4y plus 4 is a perfect square trinomial, it can be written as the quantity y plus 2 squared, and negative 16 is still here. 199 plus 9 minus 64 equals 144. Now the right side should be equal to 1, so we are going to divide our equation by 144. So 9 divided by 144 equals 1 over 16, and 16 divided by 144, it's 1 over 9, and 144 divided by 144 equals 1. So this is our standard form. Now since we already have our standard equation, we are going to complete the information below. Let's take note that our a here is 4, that's the square root of 16, our b is 3, that's the square root of 9. And to find c, this is our formula, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Now, let's solve for c. So c equals the square root of 16, this is the a squared, plus 9, this is the b squared. So 16 plus 9 is 25, square root of 25 is 5. So our c is 5. Now for our center here, the coordinates are 1 and negative 2. Take note, it's x minus 1, h is positive 1. It's y plus 2, k is negative 2. And it's somewhere here. For our opening, since our equation starts with x squared, so our graph opens to the left and right. From our table, the equation of our transverse axis is y equals k. Our k is negative 2, so that's y equals negative 2, this line. And from our table again, the equation of the conjugate axis is x equals h, our h is 1, so that means x equals 1, this line. From our table, the vertices have coordinates h minus a and k, and h plus a and k. So our h again is 1, our k is negative 2, our a is 4. Substituting these numbers into our formula, so the vertices have coordinates negative 3 and negative 2, 5 and negative 2. They are here. Now for our foci from our table, the coordinates are h minus c and k and h plus c and k. Again, h is 1, c is 5, k is negative 2. Substituting these numbers into our formula, the coordinates are negative 4 and negative 2, and 6 and negative 2. So they are here. Now, the equation of our asymptotes from our table, it's y equals k plus and minus b over a times the quantity x minus h. Again, our a is 4, our b is 3, our h is 1, our k is negative 2. Substituting those numbers into our formula, we have here the equation. y equals negative 2 plus 3 fourths times the quantity x minus 1, and y equals negative 2 minus 3 over 4 times the quantity x minus 1. To facilitate the graphing of our asymptotes, we are going to use the values of A and B. So from the center, we are going to move 4 units to the left and 4 units to the right. And from our center again, we are going to go up 3 units up and 3 units down. And we have here a rectangle formed. Our asymptotes cross the vertices of our rectangle. So these are our asymptotes. Now, let's draw our graph. So our graph looks like this. Example number four. 
write negative 25x squared plus 4y squared plus 100x plus 24y minus 164 equals 0 in standard form. Give the center, opening, transverse axis, conjugate axis, vertices, foci, and asymptotes, and graph. So this is our equation. So the first thing we are going to do is to move this negative 164 to the other side. Then group together all terms with same variables. We have here the 4y squared and the 4y. Then we have the 25x squared and the 100x. Notice here that negative 25x squared becomes positive 25x squared and positive 100x becomes negative 100x. That is because they are now in parentheses. So if you are going to multiply back negative times 25x squared, that's negative 25x squared, and negative times negative 100x, that's positive 100x. Now the next step that we are going to do is to factor out 4 here, the coefficient of y squared, and 25 the coefficient of x squared. So for this part, it becomes 4 times the quantity of y squared plus 6y, and for this part, it becomes negative 25 times the quantity x squared minus 4x. So we have 164 on the other sides. Now we are going to complete the square here. So 1 half of 6 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, so we add 9 here. 1 half of negative 4 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, so we add 4 here. Now 4 times 9 is 36, so we add 36 on the other side. Negative 25 times 4, it's negative 100, so we subtract 100 from the other side. Now y squared plus 6y plus 9 is a perfect square trinomial. It can be written as the quantity y plus 3 squared. So 4 is still here. And also x squared minus 4x plus 4 is a perfect square trinomial. It can be written as the quantity x minus 2 squared. Then the negative 25 is still here. Then we have 164 plus 36 minus 100 equals 100. The right side should be equal to 1. So we are going to divide our equation by 100. So 4 divided by 100 is 1 over 25. And 25 divided by 100, it's 1 over 4. And of course, 100 divided by 100 is 1. So this is our equation. Now, since we already know the equation, we are going to complete the information below. Let's take note that our a here is 5. That's the square root of 25. Our b is 2. That's the square root of 4. And our formula in finding C is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Now let's solve for C. So C equals the square root of our A squared is 25 plus 4. Our B squared here is 4. Then 25 plus 4 is 29. So that means C equals square root of 29. Our center here has coordinates 2 and negative 3. Take note again. It's x minus 2, h is positive 2. It's y plus 3, k is negative 3. And 2 negative 3 is here. Our equation starts with y squared. So that means our opening is upward and downward. From our table, the transverse axis has equation x equals h. So h here is 2, that means x equals 2 and this is the line our conjugate axis has equation y equals k our k is negative 3 so that means y equals negative 3 this line our vertices have coordinates h and k plus a and h and k minus a again h is 2 k is negative 3 a is 5 substituting these numbers into our formula the vertices are 2 and 2 and 2 and negative 8. And they are here. For our foci, the coordinates are h and k plus c and h and k minus c. 
So again, our H is 2, our K is negative 3, our C is square root of 29. So the coordinates are 2 and negative 3 plus square root of 29, and 2 and negative 3 minus square root of 29, and they are somewhere here. Now for our asymptotes, the equation is y equals k plus and minus a over b times the quantity x minus h. Again, our a is 5, our b is 2, our h is 2, and our k is negative 3. Substituting these numbers into our equation, we have y equals negative 3 plus 5 over 2 times the quantity x minus 2, and y equals negative 3 minus 5 over 2 times the quantity x minus 2. To facilitate the graphing of our asymptotes, we are going to use the values a and b. So, from the center, we are going to count 5 units up here, and then 5 units down here. And again, from the center, we are going to count 2 units to the left and 2 units to the right. So this is our rectangle. Our asymptotes cross the vertices of our rectangle. So these are the asymptotes. Now we can draw our graph. Our graph looks like this. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Teacher Regil. Keep safe.